Hello viewers, welcome to Keats Auto and Truck Repair. Today we have a 2008 Dodge Sprinter with a 3.0 liter. The customer complaint on this vehicle is the van is losing power tremendously. The check engine light remains on on the dash and when the van is driven down the road, the vehicle only goes up to 30 miles an hour. So this vehicle is in limp mode. I want to mention that the owner of this vehicle is one of our subscribers here on YouTube. His name is Elvin Ramos. Elvin Ramos found me on YouTube. He reached out to me via email. We exchanged contact information via email. After that, he decided to bring his van to our shop so we can fix it for him. So I would like to say thank you to Elvin Ramos for bringing business to us. Elvin Ramos, when you watch this video, I'm saying hello to you. Thank you for your business. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in the vehicle and confirm the customer's complaint. I want to test drive the vehicle around the shop to see how fast we can go. And then we're going to connect a scan tool to the vehicle so we can scan the engine computer. Hopefully we have some trouble codes that will help us figure out what's going on with this van. So now let's go in the vehicle and confirm the customer's complaint. Before I scan the engine computer, let's go for a test drive first. I'm going to start the engine. So as you can hear, the engine is running and the check engine light remains on on the dash. The glow plug light also remains on on the dash and the SRS light remains on on the dash as well. Okay, so customer's complaint confirmed. So now let's go on a test drive. Let's drive this and see how it drives. Now, I also have my scan tool connected to the vehicle. I haven't scanned the engine computer yet, but let's see how fast this vehicle is going to drive when we get on the road. Because the owner of the van says that he could not get over 30 miles an hour. So we got to drive to confirm that. So we are on the road, let's see how fast we can go with this van. Okay, so actually I'm accelerating all the way to the floor. Right now my foot is on the accelerator pedal and it's all the way down to the floor. Okay, so my foot is all the way down to the floor and the vehicle is just going slightly over 35 miles an hour and the ESP light also came on. So this vehicle is definitely losing power. So customer's complaint confirmed. This van is losing power tremendously. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop here. Let's stop here. And then I'm gonna bring up our scan tool. We're gonna scan the engine computer and see what codes we have. We might have low boost codes based on how this van is driving. We probably have low boost codes here. So right off the bat, we have four trouble codes in the engine computer. The first one is 2270 and it says glow plug control unit glow plug not actuated and then the second code says intake port swirl actuator positioner error and then the last one i mean the third one says exhaust gas recirculation cooler position sensor open circuit okay so it looks like the position sensor circuit of the egr valve the circuit is open there and then we have the classic 2626 diesel particulate filter code. Hmm. Okay, so that's good to know. 
we have the same codes on the generic side of the tool right here okay perfect so here's what I'm gonna do let's go into the engine computer I want to look at my data let's look at our codes so we have the same codes four codes in the engine computer so let's go to data I want to look at my let's look at the DPF data pids check this out our suit mass in particular filter grams is 12.42 grams so we have a lot of suit in the DPF based on the data I see over here the DPF is clogged the current particulate filter load is 2.23 very interesting and then the exhaust differential sensor is giving us a value of 0.08 psi let me graph this so this is the value coming from the pressure differential sensor interesting okay so let's drive this I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch these graphs as we are driving so right now as we are driving I have my foot all the way down to the floor on the accelerator pedal our exhaust differential pressure went up to 0 0.79 psi and then our suit content went up to 12.53 grams interesting let's just turn around here let's go back to the shop I already have an idea of how I'm gonna go about this this one went up let's turn here so when I was revving up the engine the exhaust differential PSI went up to 0.79 psi and then our suit mass in particulate filter went up to 12.69 grams so this DPF has a lot of suit in it now let's back out I also want to look at my boost data pids when we drive back I'm gonna graph my boost pressure so right now at idle our boost pressure is 979 HPA right here 979 HPA okay now when I drive this boost pressure should increase tremendously okay now the DPF being partially clogged can cause the vehicle to lose power because a partially clogged DPF will act like a restriction in the exhaust system actually I just noticed that the ABS light also came on the brake light is on the red brake light is on and the SRS light is on so it looks like this van needs a bunch of stuff okay so we're gonna drive back to the shop we're gonna limp back to the shop I'm flooring the accelerator pedal right now and as I'm flooring the accelerator pedal I'm also looking at my scan tool the maximum boost that we are building is 1062 HPA which is way lower than normal actually let me stop here I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you our boost the maximum boost that we were able to build check this out so maximum boost was so 1119 
HPA. So this engine is not building enough boost. I mean the turbo. The turbo is not building enough boost. Now, since I have worked on a lot of these printers, usually when there's a boost leak somewhere, I can kind of hear it. I can hear like a hissing sound under the hood. But what's weird is that I don't hear a hissing sound coming from under the hood. Maybe it's not loud enough, but I don't hear it. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's drive back to the shop. I'm gonna get back to the shop. I wanna smoke test the induction system to see if we have a boost leak. Because this power loss is being caused by low boost inside the intake manifold. Although we don't have a low boost code, but, oh, okay. Right now, since we are on a flat surface, the van seems to be picking up some speed right now. So we are doing about 55 miles an hour. It's because it's flat and it, there's a little slope coming back. But when we were going the other direction, when we we're going up the other direction, the van was losing power tremendously. So if you're on a flat surface, the van seems to drive pretty okay. But if you're going up a little hill, it loses power tremendously. So we are back at the shop. I'm gonna show you the scan tool again. So this is the maximum boost that we were able to build. 1209 HPA, which is way lower than normal. Okay, so let's get back into the shop. I wanna check the induction system first. I'm gonna smoke the induction system to see if we have a boost leak. If we don't have a boost leak, then I'm going to check the DPF. We're going to see if this DPF is restricted. I'm going to check the pressure differential sensor on the DPF first to see if it's good. If the pressure differential sensor is good, I'm going to recommend cleaning the DPF after we clean the DPF with the DPF cleaner. If the suit level does not go down, inside the DPF, then we're gonna have to replace the DPF. And that's after testing the pressure differential sensor first. So let's go back. Let's look at our codes again. First code, diesel particulate filter code. I mean, last code. So fourth code, diesel particulate filter code. And then third code, exhaust gas recirculation, cooler position sensor open circuit. So this can be caused by a problem in the EGR position sensor circuit or a defective position sensor inside the EGR valve assembly. And then we also have a code for the intake port swirl actuator. So intake port swirl actuator positioner. So this is the swirl motor between the intake manifolds. And this can be caused by either a defective swirl motor or a problem in the swirl motor wiring or stuck intake flaps inside the intake manifold. And then the first code over here is usually caused by a defective glow plug module or a problem in the glow plug module wiring. So now what I'm gonna do is let's get the scan tool out of the way. Let's go under the hood and smoke the induction system first. I'm a little bit surprised that we don't have a low boost trouble code over here based on how much power this van is losing, we should have a low boost code here. Okay, so we know these vans, we work on them all the time. So let's go under the hood and do some tests. We're gonna remove the air filter box. We have to remove the air filter box so we can get access to, to the turbo. Actually, I am not going to disconnect these. I'm just going to leave the mass airflow sensor connected and this sensor here connected. We're going to undo the clamp and then I'm just going to push the air filter box to the side. So we're going to pop this off just like that. So we can just push this to the side. I left the mass airflow sensor and this sensor connected because the key is on in the vehicle. If we disconnect these sensors, they're gonna trigger some trouble codes in the engine computer. 
it doesn't really matter but we just don't want to set a bunch of trouble codes in the engine computer so now i'm gonna remove this cover let's get this out of the way there is something here that i don't like so i don't like this oil that we have over here around the silencer so it looks like this turbo is leaking oil so this area should be dry the fact that this area is wet look at this this area is covered with oil and this oil over here is coming from the turbo if we remove this tube i'm sure we're gonna see oil inside this turbo outlet tube so this is not looking good look at all of this this whole area is covered with motor oil so the turbo is leaking and since the turbo is leaking that could be the cause of the low power or the actuator on the turbo could be bad also so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab our smoke machine so we can send smoke down this tube we're gonna smoke test the induction system to see if we have a leak somewhere i'm gonna get our smoke machine set up and then i'll bring you guys back up our smoke machine is out it's connected and we're good to go so now we're gonna check the induction system to see if we have a boost leak somewhere we're gonna use this bladder all right our smoke machine is on let me turn this off the smoke machine is on we're gonna turn it on when we see smoke coming out of this tube then we're gonna connect this to the bladder as you can see we got smoke coming out so now i'm gonna connect it to this tube over here good so now we're gonna wait a little bit to see if there will be smoke coming out of somewhere here between the outlet of the turbo and the intake manifold now i see a little bit of smoke coming from this area so it looks like the pcv diaphragm over here on top of the valve cover here is leaking now the pcv diaphragm is now going to cause the van to lose power so this is not on the induction side so this is not charged air we don't have charged air over here so of course this is a problem okay this is a problem but this is now going to cause the van to lose power okay so we got nothing over here okay so let's look under the van so nothing under the van so that's good all right all right so that's good we know that we have a leak on the diaphragm so that needs to be replaced now the question is is the turbo producing enough boosted air because i would be concerned if we had a leak on this side of the turbo so from the outlet of the turbo back into the charger cooler which is below the radiator and then into the intake manifold but i don't see a smoke leak or i don't see a leak around this area that smoke is coming from the diaphragm so now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to turn off our smoke machine okay and then the other thing that i want to do is i would like to check the actuator on the turbo because maybe the actuator on the turbo is not working because if the actuator on the turbo is not working, the vanes in the turbo won't open or close, which will prevent the turbo from spinning faster to create more boost. The turbo turbine, the turbine on the turbo has to spin faster to create boost inside the intake manifold. So 
The other thing I want to point out is that when you use a smoke machine on the induction system of these diesel engines, sending smoke in the induction system may not be an accurate test because when the turbo compressed the air, it sends it out at a very high pressure. So this smoke machine sends out smoke in the induction system with very low pressure. So we could still have a leak in the induction system to the point where the smoke machine is not sending the smoke in the induction system at a high pressure and we might miss that leak. So if you send smoke on these diesel engines down the induction system and if you're just using a regular smoke machine, you may still have a leak even if you don't see it. Okay, so I just want to point that out because this smoke machine does not pressurize the induction system. Okay, so we're good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to connect my RTL scan tool to the vehicle so we can actuate the actuator. I'm going to do that and then I'll bring you guys back up. I got the smoke machine out of the way. Before we test the turbo actuator, I want to show you the codes that we have in the engine computer once again. We already looked at these codes earlier. So the first code says something about the glow plug module which is this guy. We're going to check that in a moment. So glow plug control unit, glow plug not actuated. And then the second code says intake port swirl actuator positioner error. So the swirl actuator is the actuator over here. This piece over here between the intake manifolds. So this black box below the turbo is the swirl actuator. That actuator sometimes sticks if the flaps inside the intake manifolds are stuck. Okay, we're going to check the wiring of it. If the wiring is good and when we command this actuator on with the scan tool, when we command it on, it should move. We should hear a motor going on and off below this turbo. If we don't hear anything, that would mean this actuator is most likely bad. Okay. And then right now I have my test light connected to this glow plug electrical connector. So this side of the test light is connected to ground over there. And then the other side of the test light is connected to the glow plug electrical connector. So when I turn on the glow plug with the scan tool, if this module is good, the test light should light. We have another code over here. It says exhaust gas recirculation control position sensor open circuit. So that would be the EGR valve over here. We're going to check that also. And then the last thing is the DPF. Okay. So with this, we're going to check the pressure differential sensor of the DPF. So right now, let's check the glow plug control unit and the swirl motor first. So I'm going to get this out of the way. I got my RTEL scan tool connected to the vehicle. So now we're going to use our bi-directional test on the scan tool to test the turbo actuator. So right now with the key on engine off, the lever on the actuator is down. So I'm going to turn on the actuator with my scan tool. I want you guys to watch the lever over there on the actuator. If the actuator is good and if the wiring of the actuator is good, when I actuate the actuator from the scan tool, the lever on the actuator should move. So let's go to boost pressure. I'm sorry for the glare, guys. So I want you guys to look at the lever right there on the actuator. So I'm going to turn it on. So watch the lever there. Let's see if it's going to move right there. So I'm actuating the lever on the actuator with the scan tool. So the lever on the actuator is moving. So this is good. This tells me that the wiring of the actuator is good. Watch this. So the wiring is good and the actuator is good. Okay. And since it's not sticking, this lever over here is not sticking. So this tells me that the veins inside the turbo are not stuck. Okay. So there's one thing we know. We know that the wiring of the actuator is good 
and the actuator is good as well. Okay, so that's one problem or one test or one item we can rule out already. We know that's good. So now let's test the glow plug control unit. So I already unbolted it off camera. So now I'm going to turn on the glow plugs using our using our scan tool. Let's go to glow plugs. The key is still on in the vehicle. So start glow. Start the glow, so nothing. As you can see, when I start the glow, our test light doesn't light. So this tells me that there is no power going to the glow plug wire. Now, you might say, is the test light good? We can test our test light. So if I touch power, my test light should light because we're connected to ground. So right there, when I touch power, test light lights. Okay, so our test light is good. So let's reconnect the tip of the test light to the glow plug wire. Let's do this one more time. So I turn on the glow plugs. The test light doesn't light. I'm going to go in the vehicle and cycle the key. Let's see if that's going to help. Let's cycle the key. So the key is on, our test light is still not on. I can hear fuel going into the fuel pump. Okay, so our glow plugs are not getting turned on. So now I'm gonna check the glow plug module and you guys have seen me do this here on the channel. I have replaced a lot of glow plug modules here. All this oxidation of the aluminum back end of this glow plug module so first things first we're going to check our our big power supply wire to the glow plug module so i'm going to disconnect this wire this big cable okay so this cable should have power constantly if i touch my test light to it if there's power on this wire since the test light is connected to ground if there's power here the test light should light so watch this as you can see, test light light. So that's good. Our glow plug module is receiving power. Okay. So our power supply is there. So now we're going to test our ground wire. Now this glow plug module has one ground wire, which is this brown wire. So I am going to back probe this ground wire. So just like any module, for a module to work, you need good power and good ground. If I can get this thing to stay. So now we're gonna switch our test light to battery positive. So if I touch ground, my test light should light. As you can see, test light lights when I touch ground. So now I'm going to attach our back probing tool. As you can see, when I touch this back probing tool, our test light lights. So this module is receiving good ground. So I can already tell that this module is bad, just based on experience. I've done a bunch of these. So now I'm going to back probe this blue wire with a red tracer. This blue wire with a red tracer, if I remember correctly, is going to be our workup signal right yeah so this is going to be our workup signal so we're going to back probe this wire and then we're going to switch our test light to ground i'm going to connect so test light is connected to ground i'm going to connect this side of the test light to the back probing tool here I'm going to go in the vehicle and cycle the key. After we cycle the key, the test light should light if the wiring is good. So I got the key on.
let's see hold on test light lights okay so I believe this is not the wake up signal this is probably the the communication line so let's look up the wiring diagram of this vehicle here so here is our glow plug module so we checked this red wire so which is the power supply wire Okay, so we checked this wire. The power supply wire is good. So the dark blue wire with the red tracer, so this wire that I just checked, this was not the wake up signal wire. This is the communication line. I should have looked at the wiring diagram first. So our wake up signal is the black with dark green. Okay, so this over here is our wake up signal wire. So black, so black with dark green, so it's going to be this wire over here. Okay, so this is going to be our wake up signal wire. So now I'm going to connect our test light to it. It's right there. There's power there. So that's good. So now we're going to check our communication wire. So communication wire is the dark blue wire with red. I'm gonna bring up our lab scope so we can test our communication wire. 